so for the third lockdown lick, I thought I would try a more concept-driven video. So it's not a particularly amazing lick or anything like that. It's just an idea that I use a lot in my playing, I definitely overused to be honest, and you might want to try using in yours, okay? It's a way of creating tension while soloing in a, a major context, but without adding any outside notes or chromatic notes or anything like that. So what we do is we need to know our major scale, okay? So in this instance, I'm in D major. Okay, so hopefully we know our D major scale. If not, we're D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D. Okay, now we want to look for the consecutive semitones in that scale. Okay, so in a major scale, that's going to come between your major third and your fourth. So in this instance, that's going to be F sharp and G. And it's going to come between your major seventh and your root. So in this case, that's C sharp and D. Okay, so there are your consecutive semitones within the major scale. Your third to your fourth and your seventh to your root. Okay, and then we're going to look for them across adjacent strings. So strings that are next to each other. Okay, so it's a good little test of fretboard knowledge to try and find F sharps to G's across adjacent strings and C sharps to D's across adjacent strings. So that might be F sharp to open G, or 7th fret F sharp to 3rd fret G, 11th fret F sharp to 8th fret G, uh, 14th fret C sharp to 10th fret D. Now you can hear already, when you play them one after the other like that, they start to wrestle, the frequencies just clash. Usually because, it does depend a bit on your guitar tone, I've got a bit of overdrive here. Now, it works better with a, a loud valve amp up at gig volume, but even just sort of the Kemper through the monitors here, you can hear them clashing and wrestling like that. So even though I'm not adding any notes from outside the scale, it does kind of catch the ear a little bit when it's used in an otherwise kind of upbeat major context. Okay, so for this lick, what I'm doing is we're starting off with one of these. So we're gonna slide up C sharp at the 14th fret on the second string. Then D at 10th fret on the first string. Then we're gonna slide back out of it and resolve it in a nice major kind of way. So you can hopefully see the tab at the bottom of the screen. Then we're going to do exactly the same idea, but on F sharp on the third string, at 11th fret, and G at the eighth fret on the second string. And then we're going to slide back out of that and resolve that. Then we're going to finish the lick by doing it on the fourth and third string. So we're going to slide up C sharp on the fourth string, that's the 11th fret, D, at the seventh fret and the third string. And then we're gonna fret an A note at 10th fret on the second string. And then exactly the same thing. But instead of playing the A at the end, I'm gonna reach up with my middle finger and do a harmonic at seventh fret on the fifth string. So we get this E note. And it kind of resolves to that. It's played over an A chord, I think, in the, in the progression. And we're just going to allow all that to clash and crunch. And then you can resolve that however you want in some sort of happy major context. Okay, so the whole lick slowly and then up to speed is going to go. speed. 